The Ipswich City Council as a whole um, has been right on board, which is fantastic for us, with energy efficiency. Um, obviously some of that was driven by budgets because of budget savings that they could see in the long term. So some of those bigger projects included the air conditioning in this place being renovated as well as the lighting within this venue as well. We've had um, some great changes to what we've implemented here, utilising a lot more of the LED technology that's out there. From an energy point of view, on statistics alone, the biggest change would be to do with the air conditioning. So um, having got some stats from Council, so over a five year period, they were in this venue using about 2 million kilowatts of power. Um, they've reduced that in the last year, they've done a metre um, and they're basically saving um, in excess of 17% of energy just in this building alone um, and all venues throughout council they've been looking at making those changes so yeah so quite a quite a sizable drop in power consumption on this venue which obviously for council gives them uh, more money in the bank that they're not paying out so the biggest challenges for us as a venue really probably is to do with sourcing funding to make changes um, and getting that across the line that it's not just, uh, you know, obviously you have to spend money to change in this venue. What I would be responsible for is changing lighting fixtures. So to go from a par sourced house light to an LED sourced house light, someone's got to come up with those funds. That would be the hardest barrier to get through. Um, but luckily, there is some money put in council towards those sorts of initiatives. Um, so about three years ago, we moved the whole house lights from an LE, from a, sorry, a PAR 56 fixture, which choose 300 watts each fixture, down to an LED fixture at 75 watts. Um, and the spec that we had requirement was 300 lux, and the guys from you know, who fitted the house lights were able to match a like for like um, light fitting and yeah, met the spec of 300 lux. Um, so we've efficiently dropped probably 65% of the power usage just in the house lights alone. Getting council to put some money aside, um, I'm not sure I've come across the right answer to do that. It really comes down to knowing who in council looks after what um, and being persistent in presenting those. Obviously, I've had to learn that it's not a case of just saying this is what I need to do, it's showing the outcome that can come from it. So when we looked at a replacement house lighting fitting here, I was very involved in that um, because of the fact that I've got knowledge in this field. The biggest thing was to be able to go and say, okay, we can move over to this fitting and this is how much energy efficiency and start to prove some figures on the long term. And I think if you create a full case study that gives you the information on what the spend is, but what the long term savings are, then you've got somewhere to go to with essentially a council that is bean counters that look at figures. Without that information, um, as nice as an LED fixture might look, it's not going to get you across the line when you're talking, at the end of the day, a budgetary decision. I think any technical manager probably hasn't come through council yeah. to understand how council policy works. So what, what I'm suggesting is um, take resources like this that allow you to understand what you need to put together as a case study um, to help you understand how a council thinks about a manner a matter that you can then take information and develop that together in a way that actually makes sense to those people who are the business decision makers um, and I guess if you've grown up as a technician and you've made your way into the theatre and up to a, a technical manager role, you may not have that expertise and that's where going to a site like this is certainly going to help you to get a rough start and then add your own details in, then try and create something from scratch and I think that's certainly a big help for anyone who has a desire to see a change in their theatre 
but doesn't know where to go with that desire, then jump on board, grab a case study and develop that into your own project and then be able to present that um, to council management, the CFO, and be able to get that implemented. Look, for here, um, the, we, so in this venue, we have traditional lighting fixtures. Um, in, in that, we've added LED lighting fixtures. So I'm pretty happy with where the theatre's at. I obviously would like to do something with our psych lighting um, in, in LED, but obviously with touring product and you're talking calibrated colour, I'm happy to keep the traditional lighting fixtures. My guys tend to supplement probably 80% of the show is done on LED now with um, only 20% of traditional lighting fixtures. What I'd like to do is do more architectural stuff through this building is my own personal thing where we add a lot more life and colour through LED to the venue itself. So that for me is the future next couple of projects that we'll look at. Um, but anything else as far as operating in the theatre, they're just minimal projects. Um, the only one I can actually think of straight away is our movers are coming up to five years so we will do a changeover in the next year or two and I've told the boys we'll look at LED um, in a mover um, and for me it's it's not an issue of colour calibration it's um, a lot more based around um, eye candy that's the job requirement that it needs to do so I'm happy to buy LED for that I think if we're talking calibrated colour then for a while until LED technology gets closer to being the right colour rendering um, there's two sets of conversations to have there so for us eye candy, eye candy moving lights is one and then doing a lot more with the actual architectural lighting is the next step for, step for us so hmm. and technically even though we are council we are a user of a facility that is managed by a different department of council so the air conditioning the electricity the plumbing the doors the that the maintenance of this building is looked after by a council department so i actually have probably towards some venues a really cushy time for that side of things um, but it does mean i've worked very well with getting to understand what those guys in those those offices in those roles do um, I can't say enough, get to know them, get to understand what their job is, because if you ask them to do something outside of their scope, they won't do it. Um, when I first got here, I was told how difficult council was to deal with, and I haven't found that at all. I've gone in, I've met those guys, and I've been here five years now, and I know who does what in council, I know who to approach, I don't waste my time going taking the wrong project to the wrong person. And I think if you, don't take the time to know who those people are, you're just not going to get the amount of stuff done that you need to see the place grow and develop. We've obviously got an existing structure here with this theatre. We had the opportunity to develop a new youth space and what we were able to do from the development this stage was design the whole production. So what I decided in that environment was that we wouldn't worry about calibrated colour and I went out and bought completely an LED lighting rig which enables me to do full colour. Um, it has LED fresnels and profiles. The energy efficiency on that place, the whole lighting rig in that theatre, it sits on about two power circuits, so about 30 amps of power. Um, but I'm not worried about colour rendering and I don't apologise for that. The venue does youth bands through to pieces of theatre, but anyone who's going through there, it's about development theatre. So yes, a L126 is not a perfect L126, but it's pretty close, or we use LED colour to create something very similar. And I think anyone who has development spaces like that, that don't have to be colour rendered, certainly put your money into LED technology, um, I bought probably about 80 LED fixtures for up there and that would have been three years ago now. If people don't jump on board and buy this technology and help it develop, it just won't grow. And I'm very proud of that venue.
very proud that it's really has helped the industry um, because I know I've contributed to those producers and developers developing that work and I think we've got a great thing. The whole fixture being LED can strobe, it can do anything you want. Um, you know, and for, to the average person sitting there, the open white 3200 Fresnel aiming on the lead singer looks pretty damn close to what's really there. But I imagine the traditional lighting designer may not like it, but it's perfect for 90% of the work that we do.